عبد الله بن الحسن بإسناده عن آبائه عليهم السلام أنه لما أجمع أبو بكر وعمر Praise be to Allah for what he has bestowed upon us. Gratitude is due to him for all that he inspires in us. Acclaim for what he has provided, his comprehensive and gracious blessings and support, the benefits of which are too great to measure, too abundant to enumerate, their limitlessness too vast to comprehend. The Sermon of the Lady of Light, the daughter of the Holy Prophet, Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra, peace and blessings be upon her, known as the Khutbatul al-Fadakiyya or the Fadak Sermon, is regarded as one of the masterpieces in Islamic history as well as literature. It's a document of tremendous importance. Historically, the sermon has been presented as a powerful depiction of what happened to Muslims after the sad demise of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his holy progeny. When we talk about the background of the sermon that Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, and her progeny delivered in the mosque of her father, we have to observe two very important things. The first one was that the companions all who for the last 10 years before the demise and departure of the Prophet وسلم, to the eternal life, for 10 years were with the Prophet وسلم, day and night. They noticed hundreds of times that he وسلم, appointed Ali to be his successor to be the leader of community, the most learned person, the most able person to judge and to pass judgments, the one who was recognized by the Prophet وسلم, to be the gate to the city of knowledge, that he was the city of knowledge, to be the first person to embrace Islam, and many other merits and characteristics of Ali and suddenly in Saqifa only few days after the death of the Prophet وسلم, they see that there is an attack on the house that Ali and Fatima both were dwelling there that house was so highly respected and now it is attacked not only attacked, the uh, threat to ignite the, what, the flame, ignite the flames on that door, and whatever followed that, this was a shocking news, and people kept silent about it. Why Saqifa was done, this one thing. The second, that when the first caliph who got the authority as claimed by Saqifa confiscated Fadak which was gifted by the Prophet وسلم, to Lady Fatima وسلم. People had come to her house uh, Omar uh, ibn al-Khattab had threatened to burn down the house if uh, Zubair and Imam Ali السلام, had not come out of the house to pledge their allegiance. And uh, as is claimed also in Sunni sources and by Sunni historians, the door uh, of her house had been slammed against her and she had miscarried her child, Mohsen. So there had already been this chaos, this debacle, this uh, violence, aggression, uh, shocking disrespect against the daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, uh, against people who were still in mourning for the Holy Prophet as well. And then, as the historians say, the first thing that uh, Abu Bakr did when he assumed the title of Caliph was to appropriate 
land and property that had been given to the Ahlul Bayt. This was all part of a strategy to marginalize Bani Hashim. And as the historians say, Abu Bakr was in a position when he assumed the title of Caliph where he couldn't exactly openly show direct hostility or enmity to the Ahlul Bayt. He had to make an outward show of uh, expediency, as, you know, they call it expediency, as in uh, he was claiming that he was acting according to what was necessary. He was acting uh, to try to uh, minimize potential conflict that could have broken out among uh, the Ummah. In fact, he made a few claims, which in her speech, Lady Fatima Zahra, salam alayha, uh, she again directly refutes. So one was that he had taken the position of caliph, and this left the question of what his position was going to be uh, with regard to Bani Hashim. He wanted to weaken and marginalize Bani Hashim in order to be able to strengthen the position of his own caliphate, but he had to do that through outwardly legal means. Some of the scholars have said, when they look at the sermon of Sayyidah Fatima, it reflects the depth of her knowledge and her extensive understanding of the religion of Islam, of the, the complex nature of God's creation. Of course, it's not a surprise. Uh, she is considered to be one of the ma'sumin, uh, the error-free, sinless individuals that God the Almighty chose to guide mankind and indeed to be uh, exemplary role models. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually speaks about the likes of uh, Lady Fatima by saying, These are the ones that Allah has guided. Therefore, O people, follow their guidance. And some scholars have said the sermon of Sayyidina Fatima it's so deep and rich, it requires the individual to read it and to reflect upon it a number of occasions. What is Fadak? According to Hamawi in Mu'jam al Buldan, Yaqut al Hamawi, his book on Mu'jam al Buldan, which is an encyclopedia for geographical, for example, uh, descriptions of any city, any village, anything that he speaks about. That. So Yaqut al Hamawi in Mu'jam al Buldan speaks about Fadak that it was a very fertile land full of the palm trees, which sometimes the value or the income from that area was described to be something like half a million dirham. And we know that it is a huge amount of money at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever land you get as a booty of war without any fight, it belongs to, specifically to the Prophet وسلم, and to no other one person. So, it was become under the possession of the Prophet. The Prophet gave it to the, and the donated and gifted that to, her daughter, to his father, daughter Fatima. And there were workers on the land who would do that with the supervision of Lady Fatima Salamullah Now, when the negotiation and the argument and discussion was changed, exchanged by Abu Bakr and Umar, whether we leave it as it is in the hand of Ali, Imam Ali might use that too claim his leadership and by that it was political gain and at the same time not only political political game i mean to stop someone from spending money on whatever plans he had in his mind the other issue really was that that 
Omar said to Abu Bakr that you know that there are many tribes who now became upstate and we have to fight them we need to spend on these soldiers so we don't have enough money in the Baytul Mal so what was the suggestion let us confiscate this from Fatima so this is the background of Fadak and they confiscated that with the title or the excuse of the Prophet did not leave anything as inheritance and they denied it being gifted and in this way Lady Fatima raised her voice and condemned all that confiscation. They were given these lands not just for themselves, not just to enrich themselves, but as a means of welfare uh, for the community. And again, this was all part of the tradition that had begun with uh, Lady Khadija, salam alayha, where she had also had uh, large amounts of wealth and property, as was known, and she had used that uh, to support orphans, you know, as a system of welfare for the community. So the lands that had been given to Ahlul Bayt out of the Fay, as it's called, out of lands that had been given to the Ahlul Bayt, not taken as booty, uh, had been given to her, not just for her own personal use, but to continue this tradition of welfare for the community. Before analyzing the wonderful words of Sayyida Fatima, peace be upon her, we must remind ourselves of her status because when you read the words of an individual, it makes a tremendous difference when we know who that individual is. And the meanings of the words will be directly reflecting the excellence, for example, of the person who uttered these words. Sayyida Fatima is known as the chief mistress of the women of, of, of the world uh, at all times. And this is agreed upon by all Muslims, Sunni and Shia. She, according to, for example, Al-Hakim uh, Nishapuri uh, in his Mustadrak al sahihain which means that he extrapolated uh, narrations that both Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim would have, in other words, used the same criteria. He narrates that uh, one of the wives of the Prophet uh, was asked, who was the most beloved female to the Holy Prophet? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Fatima. Indeed, all Muslims in agreement that the narrations are clear in that God is pleased with the pleasure of Fatima and displeased when she is displeased. And therefore, that in itself, in addition to the fact that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the famous incident of Muwahala in chapter 3 of the Holy Book, uh, discusses the idea that she represented women. فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ that come, invite your sons and our sons and your women and our women. Now, the only individual who came with the Prophet of Islam in that incident to present themselves in the malediction known as Mubahala, to pray to God to send his la'na or to withdraw the mercy from the group that were the liars was from the women was Sayyida Fatima, peace and blessings be upon her, the daughter of the Holy Prophet. And therefore, um, the, the indications and the clear projection of hers in Quran and Sunnah portrays a, a beautiful personality with an excellent status. Uh, she is known to be the mother of her father, Umma Abiha, as the Prophet of Islam himself called her. Number one. Number two, the Imams of the Ahl al-Bayt refer to her as the proof of God over them. And as well as that, of course, we recognize that the Prophet of Islam loved her tremendously, not because she was his daughter, but she combined, she was the means by which the light of prophethood and the light of Imamat vicegerency of God after the Prophet was indeed uh, brought together in order for the continuation of the servants and the vicegerents of God uh, is presented and for mankind to be guided. We have to remember that Lady Fatima alayha, was recognized by her, by her father 
by many qualifications, merits, and characteristics. First of all, the Prophet wasallam gave her this title of Ummu Abiha, mother to her father. Of course, biologically, this is impossible. But, which means that if you want to know the essence of Islam, and you go deep in the foundation of the message of the Prophet وسلم, you have to recognize Lady Fatima as an essential element in it. So, this is what's so important. Then, there are more than 10 narrations, a hadith, from authentic, recognized and narrated by all schools, not only followers of Al-Bayt al even those who are not followers of Al-Bayt al to say that the Prophet ﷺ, to record that the Prophet ﷺ said, Fatima to Bafatun Minni, Man Abhavaha Fakad Abhavani, Woman Abhavani Fakad Abhavallah, Man Arvaha Fakad Arvani, Woman Arvani Fakad Arvallah. That Fatima is part of me, and whoever pleases her in reality pleased me, and the one who pleased me pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who harms her, hurts her, and cause damage to her, in reality he's done that to me. And whoever does that to me, in reality is confronting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She uh, organized uh, this uh, giving of the talk in the Masjid al-Nabawi. She came out of her house uh, still suffering from having been wounded and having been forced to have a miscarriage with a gathering of uh, her ladies in waiting or her companions so that she could at least testify to the fact that Abu Bakr had actually lied and this is what she says very clearly in her speech when he said that the Holy Prophet had claimed, or the Holy Prophet had said that prophets don't leave an inheritance, this was actually a lie. It was a bid'ah, it was an innovation. Um, and she also was warning Abu Bakr and Umar ibn al-Khattab and, and their supporters uh, that in inventing uh, this story about the Holy Prophet and in inventing this new piece of legislation, they were actually violating the Holy Quran uh, and they were actually putting themselves outside the bounds of Islam. If you were to uh, pick up the uh, texts of the sermon of the Sayyidah, uh, uh, the Lady of Light, peace be upon her, one thing that immediately emerges is the attention that the narrators paid towards the details that preceded the sermon itself. So they would describe, for example, how she made her way towards the mosque of the Prophet, who was with her. So one of the names given to the sermon is Khutbatul Lamma. And in Arabic, Lamma means a gathering, a group of people. Because the narrations tell us that when Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam, when she made her way towards this, uh, the mosque of the Holy Prophet, um, she had a group of people with her. How many were there? According to uh, discussions among scholars, between three to ten people were with her, of those whom she wanted to uh, bring um, with uh, herself. And what is also interesting is that the narrations highlight the attention that she had for her dress code known as the hijab. Because... Uh, the uh, sermon indicate, or the, the preludes to the sermon indicate that she was uh, wearing something that dragged on the floor, and she sometimes stepped on it. It was that act that long, and um, this was very visible to people. In other words, it was a loose garment that covered her body entirely, but it was also long as well. 
the narrators also talk about the fact that they observed how she walked and the actual text says that her walk did not in any shape or form differ from the way the Prophet of Islam walked in any shape so they they saw it was as if the Prophet of Islam peace and blessings be upon him and his progeny was actually walking and people noted this when she entered into the mosque um, she chose a time where the Muhajirin and the Ansar were there she was surrounded by her ladies uh, in waiting or her companions and that she was uh, already expressing pain physical pain she was letting out a gasp uh, expressions um, of this uh, suffering and pain that she had experienced through the slamming of the door against her uh, obviously being in a condition of mourning for her father uh, the chaos uh, that would have surrounded her the fact that while she is mourning for her father she's having to come out and deal with all of this and so then as the narrations say she came into the mosque she was concealed as we know uh, behind a hijab behind a uh, curtain and she first of all was again expressing her sorrow and her crying and sobs that were coming out um, from from this pain from her heart and as it says the whole mosque all the people there started crying they recognized that she wanted to speak but before she spoke she did something which evoked the emotion of the people thumma annat anna now what does this refer to this refers to an expression of sorrow and grief a perhaps a sound like ah for example or an indication of the extensive sadness that she was going through and the narration tell us ajhasha laha alqawm bil buka ajhasha in arabic means the people raised their voices some of them screamed in weeping and crying so this is the reason for emotional reaction by lady fatima first to see the mistreat of those who supposed to follow the footsteps of rasulullah and all people noticed oh this is the very flesh of the prophet the voice of the prophet the logic of the prophet the wisdom of the prophet that appears to the mosque to deliver her sermon in the presence of all those muhajirin and ansar of course that emotional thing was something evident and had its reasons and i guess what actually it indicates is the fact that sometimes people may display emotion may cry but it doesn't necessarily indicate their allegiance or loyalty for the first time the voice of opposition in islam was raised when lady fatima alayhi salam went to the mosque to deliver her speech O oh people, know that I am Fatima and my father is Muhammad. I have said it before and I repeat it now. What I tell you is the truth and my action is not immoderate. Indeed, a messenger was sent to you from amongst yourselves. Any distress that befalls you grieves him, for he is concerned of your well-being. He is most kind and most merciful to believers. Should you recognize him, you would know that he is my father, not the father of any of your other women. He chose my cousin as his brother from amongst all other men. Oh, what an excellent individual he was. May Allah bless him and all his progeny.